Within every auto manufacturer's lineup, there's always going to be at least one or two vehicles that will ultimately be dubbed the black sheep of the family. Cars that either weren't too well received when they were new, or they're just still leaving such bad taste in people's mouths to this day. And since 2015, Lexus has actually had one vehicle in particular that I've never been a fan of ever. And uh, that was the case until now. So I may have been a little bit harsh in the beginning saying that I've never once liked the Lexus NX, but this nimble crossover, as Lexus calls it, really just I felt needed a helping hand. It wasn't so bad that I just felt it needed to be scrapped altogether. I just felt like Lexus could have done a lot better considering the last two times I drove this car, it was even lazier than any other Lexus product that I've ever been in. But what I'm in right now is anything but lazy and it's anything but boring because what we have is a two and a half liter four cylinder generator. We have a CVT transmission underneath and normally these things are front wheel drive, but thanks to this being the plus model, it has an E axle in the back, thus making it all wheel drive. And for the first time ever, it is now a plug-in hybrid. So you can drive up to 40 miles on electric power alone and then let the gas extender and hybrid system take you another 400 miles after that. And it should come back at about 36 miles per gallon equivalent when using the hybrid system and almost 90 miles per gallon equivalent when you're driving it on electric power only. Now, as the great Richard Hammond once said, all Lexuses are beautifully designed and impeccably engineered to create unmatched levels of dullness. And if I was in the old NX at this point, I would probably agree with that. However, being the fact that I'm sitting here in electric mode right now, even at up to 60 miles an hour, this car feels anything but boring. And we all know what the benefit of being an electric vehicle is or driving on electric power alone. It's the instant torque. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, it's not as fast as something like a Tesla or something like that, but for what it is, <laughs> that's pretty fun. Oh, and did I mention this is the first NX ever with over 300 horsepower? That's 304 combined system horsepower to be specific. But then again, despite its more electrifying personality, this NX feels still very much like a Lexus product, and I mean that in the nicest of ways, because to drive, it's a little bit noisier in here than I would like, especially considering the big 20-inch wheels that we got on this one. But nonetheless, I mean, while it's not an enthusiast vehicle to drive, as you can hear when I come to a stop, I don't even have to raise my voice to have a conversation. It's quiet. It's just supremely engineered it really feels like a much more special place to be in here but just from where i'm sitting i would think i'm not in a lexus nx i feel like i'm in a completely different model one with a completely different name powertrain everything and yet here i am sitting in a vehicle that i once said was one of my least favorite lexuses of all so we've seen what the NX can behave like when you just apply electric power alone, but let's see what happens when I push one little button and I switch it over to hybrid mode. So now I've got the benefit of the gas engine and the electric motor working together. Well, let's see what that feels like. Okay then. Kind of a double-sided coin on that one. The engine is extremely vibrational. I mean, if that's even a word. I felt the vibrations from that engine coming right through my foot, but man, is that quick. 
So that little acceleration run was actually done in normal mode. Of course, Lexus and their infinite wisdom gave us the normal trio of driving modes. But what's interesting is that not only does it have a sport driving mode, but when I look down here at the gear stick, if you were to pull it straight back while it's sitting in drive, you actually have what I believe is an additional sport mode or something that kind of adds a little more of a sporty character. Let's see what that feels like. Okay then. I just left it in one gear. That's impressive. Seriously, no joke, that was impressive. Well, for an average Joe like me though, there's one big caveat to driving a car like this. It's the fact that in the back of your mind, you know that this is the second smallest Lexus crossover that you can buy right now. And yet, because it wears that big L badge pretty much everywhere, it costs $63,000 for the one I'm sitting in right now. What? I mean, listen, I understand if you wanted to charge $40,000 or $45,000. That would be acceptable in most minds for the level of what you get. But sixty-three grand? I, I'm sorry, I'm pretty hurt, sure I just heard a little shriek coming from my pocket. And that was my wallet. Now at first glance, my initial impression of this new NX was simply wow. Not just because my particular test car here is sitting in one of the most off Lexus colors I've ever seen in my entire life. Look at the metallic flake in this cadmium orange metallic. Have you ever seen a more flaky paint color from the factory? But more so, the wow came from the fact that it seems what Lexus did is they took the new generation RX's design, which is already a very striking and unique design in and of itself, and they shrunk it down using Microsoft Paint. And I'll explain what I mean as we go along, but it seems that certain aspects of this car don't exactly fit what I think of when it comes to a Lexus vehicle's design. However, nonetheless, you can tell this is truly a Lexus product. I mean, look at the headlights, for example. You got the blacked out LED lights here with your LED daytime running lights and turn signals. These are the optional triple beam LED headlights. They have headlight washers down below. You have LED fog lights and LED corner lenses down here in the lower corners of the bumper, sitting right underneath the air skirts, which go right through the front bumper. They exit out right in front of the front wheels. And I also like the extra little bits of black and dark metallic gray to kind of break up this bright orange paint here. So you have the gloss black down here in the lower corners. And then of course you get to this very uniquely dimensioned spindle grill. Now this is why I was saying it looks like Lexus kind of shrunk this car using MS Paint because if you stand back and look at it, the grill is definitely tall, but it's very narrow. I'm used to these things looking like well, I don't know, something you'd see in a Predator movie. Nonetheless, I love the inner workings of it, very much kind of like a chain mail kind of effect. But let's not forget this is a Lexus, so you have the intuitive park assist lining the front bumper here. And as an option on this one, we have Lexus's panoramic 360 monitor. But if you want to talk about hitting the bullseye in terms of size, Lexus has done exactly that with this new generation NX. This car at 183.5 inches long is six and a half inches longer than a subcompact UX, but it is exactly six inches shorter than a new generation RX five seater. So if you don't want too big or too small, the NX is your answer. Now, since we're filming this pretty much a day before Halloween, it wouldn't be complete with a little bit of dark gray in this case, or maybe black to contrast with the bright orange. And as I said, we've got exactly that with these 20 inch split five spoke aluminum alloy wheels. I love the look of these. They're not too busy. They almost look a little F sportish in my opinion, but they are wrapped in 235 50 series Bridgestone tires. And of course you can see right behind those giant disc brakes, which also include standard regenerative braking for all NX hybrids. Now, if it isn't apparent by now, Lexus is a company who does come up with some pretty innovative and creative ideas as they go along. I mean, you get some pretty typical ones for the price tag, like your mirrors are power folding. They've got the turn signals in the side. This one with the 360 camera gets the camera underneath each one. You've got standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, and you get a standard size power tilting and sliding sunroof. All things you would expect for a vehicle of this price point. Same thing with Lexus's advanced keyless access. 
it's not so much the key fob in this case because, well, this one's been around for a good while and I think it's due for a pretty hefty update soon, but you've got lock, unlock, the power tailgate in this case, panic, and the releasable key blade that comes out of the bottom. But this car doesn't even really have door handles, if that makes any sense. You can see the car is locked right now. If I come up to the car and I just grab the handle, well, that's exactly how you unlock it. It's been that way on Lexus cars for years. You want to lock it, you can simply touch the little indented portion on the side. And as you can see, once you lock it, the mirrors will automatically fold in and vice versa for when you unlock it. But let's say I go to unlock it, for example, the door handle doesn't even come out. There's a little touch pad right behind you. Just give it a very light pull. And that is what releases the door. And while the front may have its predator-like face to it, one area that Lexus has solved a big issue for me is the rear of this car. I did not, and I emphasize did not, like the rear end of the old one. The tail lights were way too small. It was too bulbous. It just, I don't know, it really set the design into a downward spiral for me. But now you look at this new one, look at these tail lights. You've got LED main bulbs, turn signals, reverse lights. You've got an LED light bar that goes all the way across the middle. And now they've even done away with the L badge on the back, spelling out Lexus across the trunk. And same thing with the NX badge down in the corner. Normally this would be highlighted in blue, signifying that it is a hybrid, but it seems the company has done away with that as well. But you also notice you've got the intuitive park assist sensors going across the bottom and no fake exhaust finishers. Thank you heaven that Lexus did not do that. I could probably understand on the F Sport, but if you did that just with a regular version, I don't know that I would have liked it as much. And for something that sits in such a middle of the road category in terms of size, the NX is surprisingly versatile when it comes to what you can haul. Now at this price point, not only would I expect a power tailgate, which we have on this one as standard, but I would also expect hands-free access. And of course, as you can see, you kick your foot underneath and the tailgate rises automatically to reveal a pretty spacious 22.7 cubic feet of cargo volume with the seats up. Now, of course, you can see I have all of my junk back here, but what's really shocking is that even with the seats up, this NX has more cargo volume than a Lexus UX has with all of its seats down. But what's even more surprising is once you take away things like the cargo cover and you fold down that 60-40 split fold back seat, you're looking at 46.9 cubic feet of cargo volume. Now, I'm not one to make too educated of a guess, but that sounds like a pretty top of the class number. And I would suspect no less. You could fold those seats down, probably get some small furniture in here. So definitely utilitarian, despite the fact it's not the biggest one in the family. And at this point, it already seems like the new NX has quite a lot to say for itself. It's put on a brand new suit. It's got a brand new plug-in hybrid powertrain that's way more powerful than the old one. And you would think that that would be enough for Lexus to say, yep, we've given you a brand new car. This is all we're gonna do, here you go. But oh boy, was I wrong. And I have saved the best part for last because guys, check out this interior. Oh my Lanta, this is, by all accounts, light years ahead of the old NX. Look at these black leather bound seats. I love the silver stitching. I love the stitch pattern in the middle. They're heated and ventilated for both front occupants. You've got a driver's seat memory as well. And then just look at the dash. I mean, the steering wheel is leather wrapped. It's heated in this case. You've got the silver paddle shifters here on the back, even though this isn't the F Sport model. So that's kind of surprising. It's attached to a power tilting and telescoping steering column. And then pretty much everything else in here is all digital. Your gauge cluster has a seven inch thin film transistor display and don't even get me started on the monster of an infotainment system. So if you really wanna know where Lexus has spent all their money on this new one, well, this is it right here. And once you're behind the wheel, this is where you start to feel very, very special. Not only is it extremely comfortable and quiet, like what I was mentioning on the test drive, but it feels so much more modern than a lot of other Lexus products that I've been in before, especially, but not counting out the new infotainment, the new gauge cluster, and the new functions here on the steering wheel. You notice you have some physical buttons like your volume control, your activation for your dynamic all-speed radar cruise control, your lane departure warning, and so on, but then you notice you have two arrow pads on each side of the wheel and also a couple of buttons that look like the pages of books. And all of these buttons are touch sensitive with a little bit of resistance to them, but 
every time your finger goes near one of these buttons, all of the functions show up on the standard heads up display up there at the top of the steering wheel. But changing buttons on the steering wheel, that's just mere peanuts compared to the main event inside, outside, and upside down, which is this, a 14 inch combination climate control and infotainment setup. I mean, the last time I saw something this big, it had a keyboard and a mouse attached to it. And the only other time I've ever seen this in a Toyota or Lexus product, I was in the new Toyota Tundra. And this is a huge breath of fresh air for me because it wasn't even all that long ago, we were in a brand new $100,000 2022 Lexus LS, and it didn't even have anything this advanced. It still had a pretty big screen, but it didn't allow you to say, scroll in and out on the navigation screen, you know, like you would on a smartphone. It didn't have all your climate controls, temperature settings, heated ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, fan speed, or anything integrated into the touch function. So this is light years ahead of what Toyota and Lexus have had before. And it still has a lot of the other usual suspects. I mean, you got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which are both wireless. I would expect no less for the money in this, but it also has some pretty fun stuff. Like for example, if I were to say, Hey Lexus. What do you want to do? I'm too cold. Setting the driver's seat temperature to 71 degrees. But of course, the other advantage of having such a big screen is making much better use of the 360 panoramic monitor. Now, just a quick note, this panoramic monitor is part of a three system package, which also includes front cross traffic alert and lane change assist. So if you decide you want the 360 monitor, you're gonna be including those other two things as well. But what I love about the big screen is the fact that the camera angle is much bigger. You've got a much more clear picture around your vehicle as part of that 360 system. And of course, you you can change everything like the guidance lines or you can also put the camera on more of a wide angle setting if you so desire but the other cool thing is once i put it back in park i can reach down here just below the screen push a little camera button and now I have a full three-dimensional picture of what's going on outside. This is a system we've seen in Lexus cars before, but it's still kind of cool to see it here, even in Lexus's newest infotainment system. Now you could put a big screen in just about any car, and of course you could have things like Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and a good navigation system to boot. But one thing that always is a big point of mine is testing the sound system. Now, unfortunately in this car, we don't have the Mark Levinson system on board, we just have the standard 10 speaker Lexus audio system. And you know what, for a factory sound system, it really is not that bad. And because Lexus in their infinite wisdom decided to include everything but the kitchen sink in one giant screen, it's left a lot of extra space for a much cleaner middle and lower console. First of all, you notice down here, there is no remote touch interface anymore. That is completely gone, but it's left a lot of room for other sort of premium options and a very sort of elegantly styled center console with this nice little gloss black swoop here. Things like your drive mode select, so you have eco, normal, and sport, you just twist or push push the dial however you want, uh, whichever mode you want to be in. But you have some other little hidden gems like the camera button, which I was using earlier to activate those animations up there on the big screen. But you also have a little button with a steering wheel on it and the letter P. This car, thanks to the optional active park system, can truly park itself. Everything else down here in the middle, you have a standard wireless charger on this luxury model, which I really like because it sort of magnetizes my phone and actually holds it in place on the wireless charger. And then you get to a very peculiar gear shifter here. Your park is just a button, but then you can go over and up for reverse. Hold, hold over to the middle for neutral, pull it over to the left and back for drive, and then pull it straight back while you're in drive, and that puts it in sport mode. But you notice everything else, you've got buttons for alternating between hybrid and electric mode, or you can just do that in automatic mode, your electronic parking brake, auto brake hold, etc. And then you have a very nice little flip-up center console here with nothing really else in there to speak of. 
But another one of my gripes that I had with the old NX is the fact that the rear seats just seemed a little too small for me. And um, looking in the back here, I mean, it would seem at first glance that you have at least enough room for decently tall passengers, maybe someone not as tall as me. Let's crawl back here. Let's just see what kind of room we got. Well, um, it's definitely not great. It's still not as much as I was expecting back here. Thank goodness the back of these seats is padded in leather, but you can see there's not much room between my knee and the back of the seat, but thank goodness you have leather bound mat pockets back here. You have two charging points back here as well, two USB-Cs, as well as a nice little plug. And also, if you're rear guests have some refreshments of course you have two decently sized cup holders back here as well but you also may be wondering what on earth is that it looks like well basically the weirdest gadget i've ever seen with a giant usb sticking out of the back of it that is your tablet holder and it would appear that it actually goes this way so you take that giant usb or whatever you stick it in the little holder up here in the back of the seat and now your children can actually watch things on say an iPad or some kind of tablet. And of course it is adjustable depending on your tablet size. Unfortunately, like all good things though, this now wraps up our review and drive of the all new 2022 Lexus NX 450 Hybrid Plus all wheel drive. Now, all I can really say about this thing is yes, it's a Lexus and yes, it's expensive, especially for the size vehicle that it is. But in the end, it has solved so many of the issues that I had with the prior generation, I don't even know where to begin. But anyways, guys, if you've enjoyed this video today, please give this video a thumbs up. And also while you're at it, hit the subscribe button down below because trust me, I always appreciate the support and it makes me wanna continue doing things like this for you guys in the future. At the end of the day though, my credit goes right back to Lexus USA, who have lent us the new NX to really put through its paces over a whole week. But at the end of it, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see y'all next time. Take care, everybody, and stay safe.